It is the 1st of November, and if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, winter is setting in. Now that could mean different things depending on what climate you're in. Here in Southern California, what it means for us is that we are switching from warm season crops to cool season crops, which will grow from now until about April. However, due to some shady areas in my particular garden, there are spots that I don't really expect a lot of production from because they are in the shade in the winter. But I don't wanna leave those areas blank. They're not gonna have much growing there, but bare soil is not a good thing to have, especially throughout the entire winter. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why that is and give you a couple of solutions to be able to protect the soil during the winter, build the soil during the winter so that come spring, that soil is gonna be ready to really give you a great amount of production for your summer crops. Before we get started, there's something new that I'm gonna try out in this video, and that's this information bar down below. In that information bar, it's gonna tell you what's gonna be covered in the video and when. So let me know what you think. So why bother preparing several months in advance for spring planting? Well, the first thing we wanna pr protect our soil from is the winter elements, rain, snow, and wind. Wind and rain can erode your soil away and rain and snow melt can leach the important nutrients deep into the soil where your roots can't reach them. Plant roots are typically, especially in vegetables, they're pretty shallow. And so all the nutrients that are available for them very close to the surface can be washed down deep that the plant roots will never be able to access. This is especially true in raised beds because they're very free draining. So why not just add more fertilizer in the spring? You can, but number one, that's adding a big job to an already you know stressful and busy time of year in the garden springtime it also unless you make all of your own fertilizer you know homemade compost and maybe compost teas it's going to get expensive to have to add all that fertilizer every single year you're also not taking advantage of all that free labor that you have in your soil, and that's the worms. You can put them to work all winter long if you mulch. And that is the first way to prepare your soil for winter, adding a nice thick layer, two or three inches of organic compost, homemade if possible. If not, any organic compost from the garden center will work. It's gonna protect the soil from the rain and the wind and it's gonna suppress weeds, and it's also gonna give the worm something to munch on all winter, taking all that nutrients that's available in that organic matter and breaking it down so the plants can access it in the spring. Now for my mulch, I use homemade um, compost, and I use it before it gets fully broken down. It, it's, it's pretty broken down, but you can still see, you know, leaves and bits of organic material that you know, you can still tell what they are. And that gives the worms extra jobs to do, extra work over the winter to help break it down. Um, so if you put a nice thick layer on there, you're good to go. Now, one extra step you can take, especially in raised beds, because like I mentioned, raised beds, especially over concrete, they're very porous, they're very free draining, and it's much easier for those nutrients to leach out. So what you can do is you can take a tarp or plastic and cover the mulch. So you want to mulch first, cover the mulch with that plastic, weight it down with some, some rocks or something. And that's going to protect uh, all winter long your beds from either rain or snow melt. So all those nutrients that the worms are breaking down, it's not just washing out of your beds. Another benefit to covering your beds like that is in the spring, it's going to warm up a lot sooner than an unprotected bed. Now, another way to protect your soil during the winter is by planting a cover crop. And right now is about the time to do it. You wanna do it about 30 days before your first frost. Now, a cover crop is a thickly sown, fast growing crop that does several things. 
First of all, the roots, as they grow through the soil, they're gonna keep the soil structure intact. They're gonna keep it aerated um, and, and not compact as it can do in the winter with you know the elements like we were talking about. As the roots grow through the soil, it creates this network that just gives the soil some lift. They also hold the soil together just mechanically with their roots. So it does protect against the uh, erosion from the rain and the wind. Now, in addition to holding the soil together, if you plant the right cover crop, it's actually gonna give back nutrients to the soil. I actually talked in another video from last year about how legumes can actually take nitrogen from the air and store it in little nodules in their root system. There's a popular myth out there that if you grow beans, it's going to actually collect the nitrogen from the air, store it in the root system, and then the next crop you plant there will get the benefit from all that added nitrogen in the soil. Unfortunately, that's not true. You see, the beans do do that, but they also use up the nitrogen that they store while they're producing their crop. However, if you cut the beans off at ground level right before they produce their crop, so right as they're flowering, then the nitrogen will stay in the soil. But who wants to take their entire crop of beans and just get rid of it before you get any beans? I don't want to do that. However, there is a legume, namely clover. Clover is a, a legume. Weird, right? But this will actually fix the nitrogen into the soil, just like a bean. And you can cut this off right as it's blooming. You're not gonna lose any kind of fruit, but you're gonna get the nitrogen in the soil. You're also gonna have all of that green material that's above the ground that will be able to give back to the soil in a couple of different ways. What do you do with it? Well, depending on how you garden, there's a couple of different ways that you can use it. You can actually, as you cut it off, you can dig it right into the soil. And over the next four to six weeks, it's gonna break down and feed your soil with some great nitrogen. However, for me, I'm not gonna be able to do that. And that is because I have been doing a lot of research on soil microbiology namely how plants talk to each other through fungus in the soil. It's kind of like the internet for soil. So I'm doing a lot of research, not only for my garden, but to do a video that's gonna come out in the spring. And it's gonna be a great video. If you haven't heard of this before, it is fascinating. If you ever saw the movie Avatar, where the plants and the trees all communicate, it's basically that in real life and it's happening in your garden but the problem is every season when we dig up the soil or till it under or turn it we are breaking apart that intricate network that is connecting all of that life in your garden it's kind of like if someone came to your house and cut your internet cable you wouldn't be too happy or cut the entire neighborhood's internet or came in and smashed up all the streets so nobody could you know get around that's what we're doing to our garden when we're digging and tilling. So I am no longer going to do that. So for me, the options with the clover or the cover crop would be to cut it off at ground level once it starts to bloom. And then you can either compost that, put that in your compost bin, or let it lay right there on the soil as a mulch and decompose that way. And it really is just a preference which way you want to do it. Now, if you know me, you know that I am as much about a tidy garden as I am a productive garden. So for me, it's going to go in the compost and I'm going to add it later when it's fully done. And I think once I put that video out in spring and really give you the details of how that entire system works, you might join me with having a no dig or no till garden. So make sure your notifications are on, make sure you're subscribed. So when that video comes out in the spring, you can take advantage of it. I have great soil already. I mean, look how friable this is. I can plant any seed in there and it's gonna thrive. And you know what, you're probably right. But 
I'll bet you a bunch of weed seeds would agree with you. And it's going to be really easy for those weeds to germinate in your garden also. So that's another benefit of cover crops is they compete with the weeds for soil nutrients and for sunlight. So the next natural question might be, aren't I, if I plant clover or rye grass, which is another cover crop, aren't I just introducing more weeds already to the garden? Yes and no. See, a weed is really any plant that grows where you don't want it. So for instance, we have squirrels that plant macadamia nuts all over our yard. We have a neighbor that has a macadamia nut tree and they take these little seeds and store them for the winter. So they're growing in the lawn, they're growing in the beds. It's a macadamia weed. Every plant has its purpose as long as it's growing in the right spot. So cover crops like clover or ryegrass have very shallow root systems. So even if they were where you don't want them, they're really easy to pull out and you're actually cutting them off before they make any seeds. So they're not going to spread that way. So really you get all the benefits of the weed, but you don't get the invasive, uh, the invasiveness or the pain associated with, you know, weeds growing where you don't want them to grow. So I am going to be sowing crimson clover. Crimson and clover. Yep. I've had that song in my head all week and now I pass it on to you. You're welcome. However, if you're any older than I am, you probably have no idea what that song is. So what we're going to do is we're going to sow these by broadcasting them. And to broadcast seeds, you're going to take advantage of the natural cracks you have between your fingers. And these grow you know, fairly large. So you're not going to like see seeds, a sea of seeds. And this one pack will actually go a long way but you're actually just going to take these seeds and sprinkle them across the, the garden bed. And we're not really gonna bury them. You're just gonna take your hand and kind of rake them in. That's it, keep them moist. And within four to six weeks, they're gonna be ready to cut down or harvest and either leave them on the soil, dig them in or put them in the compost. One more way to use these seeds is undercropping. So let's say you have a bed that's already got maybe cauliflower or um, any kind of brassica, really those big wide plants that underneath have a lot of soil that is bare, right? It's one stalk and then a big wide plant. You can undercrop and you're going to basically just do the same exact thing under the crops so that all that bare soil is now, um, being taken up by a cover crop, but you've got the nice big cauliflower or cabbages right growing, growing right over them. So I hope this video has been beneficial. If you got something out of it and this is your first time here, maybe consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time.